Good morning, Embrace Church. Uh, welcome to Sunday morning service. Uh, we're just so happy to have you here uh, worshiping with us together. Uh, my name is Mike Lee, and I'm one of the praise team leaders, and we're just so happy that uh, you could be joining us. Uh, before we begin our praise this morning, um, I'd like to invite everyone to be in a time of uh, kind of gathering our, our, our souls and our thoughts and um, be in a moment of meditation and preparation for the message today. Um, it's been uh, quite a challenging week uh, with everything that's happening these days, uh, especially in the news with the shooting of Dante Wright, um, the more recent shooting of uh, Adam Toledo, and the ongoing trial of Derek Chauvin when in, in the murder of uh, George Floyd. Amongst all these things that are happening in our society, um, I'm having a lot of trouble finding ways to to um, respond to everything that's happening. Um, I don't know, it's kind of hard to, to know what to think, what to feel in a time like this where it just seems like every day something else um, is happening to, to people in our society. Um, um, so yeah, I guess in, in, in this time, I'd like to invite everyone to be in a moment of silent uh, meditation and preparation um, to examine all those things that we're struggling with um, and offer those down to God right now. So let's take a few moments and do that. Let's take a few deep breaths in. cleansing breaths. Take a few moments to quiet our minds and be still in the presence of God. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we come to you this morning weary, broken, and worn, Father God. God, there's just so many things that are, are happening to our brothers and sisters um, in our society, God. There's a lot of fear and anger, disappointment, numbness, anxiousness, despair, pain, Father God, that is just happening. It feels like constantly, every day, Lord. And God, I just, I personally don't know what to do with this sometimes. And Lord, I know I'm not alone in feeling this. God, we often want to raise our hands and just throw up our hands and give up in frustration and despair in tiredness, Lord. But Father, I just pray this morning uh, in this time, as hard as it is, that we are able to find some form of hope, Lord. You ask us to have faith, even the size as small as a mustard seed, Lord. If we just have faith that small in you, God, you'll be able to move mountains. So as we're about to sing, open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Help us to see you, even amidst all this, all this pain and, and this ugliness that's happening in our world. Help us to see you, God. Though we may not have any answers right now, 
We don't know what's going to happen in the future, Father God. Help us to continue to seek you. I thank you for this morning. I thank you for my community. And I thank you for this opportunity to worship you, God. I pray all these things in your name. Amen. darkness we were waiting with 
found home without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt To redeem the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation, you do not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died. Till the stone was moved for good For the Lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel the Lord shall not near, shall not fail. By His blood and in His name, in His freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the
Good morning, Embrace. Uh, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Uh, we thank you for the gift of a new day, Lord. Uh, we thank you for this community uh, where we can gather and get to know you better, Lord. Uh, Lord, as we just sang, uh, thank you for your promise, Lord, that your promise still stands, that you are faithful, Lord. And Lord, we, pr we uh, pray for that confidence uh, that we can truly believe that you will never fail us, Lord. Uh, Lord, we know that you are constant, that your love and your grace never changes. Uh, yet just so much in our own lives uh, seem to change and, and affect how we may feel towards you, Lord. So today we pray for reassurance. Uh, we, we pray for a, a confirming desire to know you, Lord, that we confess we are not perfect, yet we strive for a perfect relationship with you, Lord. So. Uh, whatever that means to all of us individually or as a community, Lord, may you speak to us today through Pastor Sam. 
Uh, may you allow us to receive his word, to receive his message with open ears and open hearts, Lord, um, that we can love you more and serve you more and praise you more each and every day, Lord. Uh, so we thank you. Uh, may you bless this time. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, church. God is great here and now. Here and now, God is great. Uh, welcome to Embrace Online this morning. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for worship today. My name is Sam Yoon. I'm the pastor here at Embrace Church. Uh, this is a place where everybody is welcome, where black lives matter, where we stand against Asian hate, and where we gather with this hunch that life with God is better than life without God. My prayer is that you will grow deeper in that life with God today through our worship, through the singing of songs, uh, through our prayers, and especially uh, through this message that you'll be hearing uh, in just a moment. Great thanks to our worship leaders uh, this morning, uh, Mike Lee and Hans Cho. Uh, always so grateful uh, for your gifts and for your helping us experience uh, the presence of God. Uh, worship is always, always so, so good. And again, thank you uh, for uh, blessing us. Today, uh, we continue in our sermon series that we began uh, last week, a sermon series that we're calling Resurrection Stories. Uh, we are now two weeks from Easter, uh, but friends, Easter is not over. Amen? Christ is risen, and Christ is still risen indeed. And today, we'll be looking at uh, another resurrection story uh, in the Bible, uh, in a message entitled, Scripture, uh, The Walk to Emmaus. Today, I'm really excited and, and grateful to have reading our scripture passage for us this morning, uh, Susan Kim. Uh, a lot of the little people in our church, our kids and our youth, uh, know uh, Susan Kim, of course, as teacher Susan, and she faithfully and lovingly leads our next-gen ministry uh, week after week from Sunday to Sunday, and so much love that pours out from her, and she'll be bringing us the word this morning. I invite you to follow along in your homes. Good morning, Embrace, and welcome to worship. Our scripture reading today comes from the New Testament, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. I encourage you to follow along in your Bibles or Bible apps. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our leader, rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. What is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they 
urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scripture to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word today. Amen. Well, great thanks once again to teacher Susan uh, for bringing us the word this morning and also bringing the word to uh, the little and precious hearts of our community each and every Sunday. And by the way, uh, that passage that we just read together um, just now was the focus of the Sunday school lesson a week ago. And so the children are a little bit ahead of us. And so as we catch up today, I invite you now to uh, be in a spirit and attitude of prayer as we invite the Holy Spirit to come and speak to our hearts. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for uh, this moment of worship and the gift of this uh, beautiful day, this day that we have never seen before and this day that we will never see again. And yet in this day, you call us to rejoice and be glad in it. God, may we find our gladness in, in really hearing your word today. May we discover and experience our gladness by experiencing the presence of the risen Christ among us today. And may you be powerful in this moment so that as we open up our hearts to you, that you would draw us deeper into a relationship with you and your son, Jesus Christ. And now, Lord, would you fill me with your Holy Spirit so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. And so today we are looking at uh, another uh, resurrection story. And in the story today, uh, the question that I want to ask, that I want to lift up, is how do we come to recognize the risen Christ uh, in our midst? Again, we are like two weeks away from Easter and two weeks ago, uh, as we gathered together to celebrate um, the joy of the resurrection, the awe and the mystery of the empty tomb, uh, you know, we shouted out, Christ is risen, he is risen. Indeed, we try to do that with enthusiasm and with some level of conviction. And, and I believe that maybe a, a few of us actually did have a level of conviction in our hearts, but if we're really honest, uh, we know that uh, from Sunday to Sunday and even from Easter to Easter, uh, so many times our hearts are not really fully convicted, uh, but the reality is that we're still seeking, we're, we're still questioning, and we're still struggling with some doubts. And so uh, we began uh, the series last week, the Resurrection Story series last week, by making this observation, this observation that having questions and experiencing doubts is more the norm than the exception to the rule. In other words, you know, I, I believe that this is familiar territory uh, for you and for me. We all question and we all experience doubts. And the reason is because life is far from perfect. Life is infinitely uncertain. So when there is chaos that unfolds around us uh, in this world, uh, in our nation, uh, in our very own lives, if the things that we had planned out or our particular agendas don't, you know, unfold the way that we had hoped and we experience struggles, pains, challenges, uh, loss, you know, twists and turns, fears and anxieties, 
uh, as we live out our everyday lives, uh, what we're confronted with are these questions and doubts, even when it comes to our lives of faith. And what I want to remind you, uh, something that I mentioned last week, is that to doubt and to question is not only normal for us, I would say that it is very much a part of our faith, an essential part of our faith. In fact, I would even go as far as to argue that belief and conviction comes by way of doubting and questioning. Doubts and questions are oftentimes the precursor to experiencing belief and conviction. And really, this was the experience of the first followers of Jesus Christ. Uh, If you remember from two weeks ago uh, on Easter Sunday, as we looked at the story of the empty tomb, uh, what we discovered there was that the general response of the first followers of Jesus to the resurrection was that they did not fully understand. They didn't get it. The women go to the tomb. They bring their spices. You know, they're looking for Jesus, who in their minds, the expectation was that Jesus was crucified on the cross on a Friday, on a Sunday morning. They expected him still to be dead and lying there in the tomb. But instead, the body is missing. Uh, they're confronted uh, with, by an angel. The angel says Christ is in fact risen and that he'll meet you. In Gal- and they're hearing all of this. You know, their minds are blown. Uh, they're kind of confused. Uh, they're actually terrified, uh, you know, thinking through all that they're seeing and witnessing and experiencing, and, and they really don't get it. They go back and tell the disciples, and, and they don't get it. More often than not, Uh, This is the baseline uh, for uh, what faith really entails and involves. Uh, We look at the early story of how the gospel unfolds, and and this is the standard. This is the norm that doubts and questions will be present. And I believe this is why over and over again in the New Testament, Jesus appears in his resurrected form uh, as if to say, hey, if you don't get it yet, I'm going to show up. I'm going to meet you in the midst of your doubts and your questions. I'm going to show you my resurrected body, you know, the scars in my hands and my feet and my side. And and I'm going to show you that what I said would happen has really happened, that I am risen from the dead, and, and I want you to actually get it. In fact, the New Testament references at least 10 times that Jesus appeared after his resurrection, including one time in which he appeared to more than 500 people at once. And we're, we're seeing these stories over and over again. And today, uh, we're looking at another one of these resurrection appearances in a story that has become known throughout history as the famous Walk to Emmaus, the seven-mile walk from Jerusalem to this particular village. And um, this is what we read in Luke chapter 24, verse 13 through 14. Now, that same day, uh, what is that same day? That's the day of the resurrection. So the morning, the women go to the tomb, the body is missing. Sometime later that day, the two of them, these two disciples, were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, And they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. Uh, This is what we read. And um, scholars are kind of unsure as to the exact location of this particular village called Emmaus. But suffice it to say, uh, it is seven miles uh, away from the place where all these incredible things uh, had just unfolded uh, over the weekend. Uh, Jesus being crucified, dying on the cross, right? And then being buried in the tomb. And then the tomb being empty. And this, um, you know, this truth of, of the Bible narrative that, that Jesus is risen. And, and the disciples don't fully get it. 
But wh- wherever this Emmaus is, what I want you to understand is that they are walking. These two disciples are walking away from the place of promise. They are walking away from the place of power where this miracle had taken place. They are walking away from the empty tomb, the proof that Jesus had been risen from the dead. And where are they going? They're going to Emmaus. Most likely Emmaus is basically uh, their home. They're going back home because they're, they're dejected. They're discouraged. And, and this is what we're reading. They're taking this long journey back, away from Jerusalem, back home. And on the way, they're talking about everything that had happened. Of course, uh, this is uh, fresh you know, on their hearts and in their minds. Of course, that this is going to be uh, the central topic, uh, the central uh, topic of discussion. And so they're walking along, they're talking to each other about Jesus, they're probably reflecting on the horror of the crucifixion, Uh, they're talking about uh, the women who had come and shared about the body being missing, and and they're, they're just like, they're so confused, they're trying to figure out what did they just experience. And then in Luke uh, 24, uh, verse 15 and 16, it says this, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing them, recognizing him. And friends, this is like the, this is the fantastic and almost comical part of the story. Um, they're talking about Jesus and Jesus comes along and they don't recognize that it's him. For some reason, it says here that they were kept from recognizing the very person that they were just talking about. I believe that what the disciples are experiencing is what I call the glass effect. Uh, people who wear glasses like me, uh, you know uh, this particular experience. Uh, and especially if you are advanced in ears like me, this happens uh, more often uh, than not. Um, it's, this is what happens. Like, I, you know, I'm looking for my glasses, right? I'm looking everywhere, everywhere. And, you know, where did I leave it? Is it on the table? Is it in the dining room? Is it on my desk? Is it, did I leave it on the couch in the bathroom? I'm looking all over the place. And finally, I realized it's on my face, right? The glasses. I've been wearing it the whole time, but I was searching for it. And this is what I call the glass effect. And I feel like this is what these two disciples are experiencing as they're uh, making this journey from away from Jerusalem back home to Emmaus, their hearts are kind of dejected. And what they're experiencing is something that I think a lot of us experience when it comes to our lives of faith. See, it is not unusual for people to miss the presence of God even when God is present right before their eyes. This is what I would call spiritual blindness. It happens all the time. God is present in our lives. God is working in our midst. You know, we see a lot of chaos unfolding in this world, in our nation, maybe even in our lives, and God is right there, but we don't see God. And the reason why is because we're kind of experiencing some sort uh, of blindness. We're, we're not able to recognize the presence of of God. And this is what happens to these disciples. And Jesus comes along beside them as they are talking about him and everything that has just unfolded uh, over the weekend. And Jesus basically asks them, hey, dudes, what are you talking about, right? This is like comical. This is, an, uh, this is a very, you know, funny uh, resurrection scene in the Bible. Jesus comes up, what are you talking about? Obviously, they're talking about him. They don't recognize him. And what they say is, hey, you know, are you the only one in Jerusalem that doesn't understand or haven't heard what just happened? And so they begin to tell Jesus about Jesus. They begin to tell uh, the one who died on the cross about how someone died on the cross. And this is what they say in Luke 24, 20 through 21. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. 
But we had a hope that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. So they begin to explain to this Jesus that they don't recognize the events that had just unfolded about you know, their, their savior, their, their master, their teacher being handed over, uh, being arrested, uh, that he goes through this excruciating uh, suffering and, and death on the cross. And, and I love what, what they tell Jesus in this moment. And again, they don't know that it's him. They say, but we had hoped. And uh, I, I feel like, you know, when they say this, that but we had hoped, that so many of us would resonate with exactly their emotional, psychological, and spiritual state. They had this expectation of Jesus doing something incredible in the way of really being the Messiah, the one that would experience victory. But what they just saw is his death, is his burial. Now the body is missing And they're basically saying, we had this one particular image. We had this one particular expectation of the way that God would work, the way that Jesus would work, and it didn't turn out the way that we had expected. We had hoped for one thing, but what we saw or what we seem to have saw, seen, is is something very different. Uh, Maybe you have experienced that in your life. Uh, You sought God you had hope for God to answer a certain type of prayer. You had hope for God to bring forth a certain type of miracle. Maybe you had hope for God to, you know, bless you with a promotion or, or some sort of thing that you were pursuing in life. And it didn't really pan out that way, but you had hoped. But the reality is different. Uh, we can resonate with these two disciples as they're experiencing this. And now they say, what is more, it is the third day. And the reason why they mention this is because Jesus, before he died, he said on the third day that he will rise again. And the body is missing, but for some reason, these two disciples, they're not still fully convicted about the resurrection of Jesus. And, and I want you to notice that in the statement of, and, and what is more, it is the third day, they're like getting close to giving up on the promise of Christ. Now, the third day is not over. It is still the third day. They should hang on and they should still be waiting. They should still be seeking. But it feels like they're getting close to giving up. And here is Jesus' response. I love this. He said to them, How foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them. What was said in all the scriptures concerning himself? In other words, as these two disciples are experiencing their doubts and their questions and their struggles and almost getting to the point of giving up on hope, Jesus' response is that he begins to give them an explanation of himself through scripture from Moses and all the prophets. He explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And what this leads to is ultimately then their recognition of who this individual is that comes alongside of them on this seven mile journey to Emmaus. This is what we read in Luke chapter 24 verse 31 and 32 then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight which is kind of interesting the moment that they recognized jesus like he's gone and then they asked each other were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scripture to us i, I love this description I love what the disciples are now saying to each other. The moment that we recognized Jesus was when he started to tell us about himself through scripture, through the word of God. And as the word of God was being opened to them, they felt their hearts burning is what they declare. Today, um, 
I'm so grateful that as part of our Resurrection Story series, that uh, a good friend of ours, uh, Jason Lee, has agreed to share his testimony of how he had been impacted by Scripture. Uh, many in, 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 a, in the same way as these disciples uh, had been impacted by Scripture uh, 2,000 years ago. And so I want to invite you to uh, listen to um, our conversation uh, that we uh, had um, a couple days ago. Let's take a look. All right, well, I am here with my uh, good friend and brother in Christ, uh, Jason Lee, uh, whom I know uh, many of you uh, know as uh, none other than Jelly, uh, down for whatever Jelly, we call him DFW. And so grateful that um, uh, Jelly has agreed uh, to be a part of our resurrection stories and and share uh, his own testimony as well. Uh, Jelly, welcome to the Resurrection Story series. And um, you've been uh, with Embrace for uh, quite a long time, uh, literally since the beginning. But can you share like how you got involved with Embrace? Yeah. Um, wow, it seems like it was so long ago. Uh... I was it seven, eight, eight years maybe. Uh, I guess to keep it simple, um, my journey started with just uh, a question or uh, an invite from my brother and, and Hans. Uh, at that time, Hans was explained to me that he was trying to start a new small group with uh, with you, um, with a group of people who grew up in the church atmosphere but stopped going, and that fit my demographic. I think at that point, I was looking for something to get back into but looking for a new church was very difficult so i thought this would be a good first step into um just re-engaging my relationship with christ and uh, i went to a small group it was super small back then uh it being the beginning and when i met you 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 introduced the simple idea of just a group of people getting together with the simple idea uh the hunch that life with god is yeah. without god and uh that simple idea was just a seed that was planted in my soul. And it, I guess that's where it started and um, the, the rest was history. Yeah, that was actually uh, March of 2012, uh, believe it or not. So uh, more, than, more than eight years, almost uh, like, uh, well, I guess it would be a little over nine years. And uh, what, a, what a great way to, you know, begin uh, once again, a, a spiritual journey and uh, my understanding was that for you and, and for a lot of the members of the original, what we call the East Bay small group, uh, which turned into the Embrace Church plant, was that people had left church and, you know, um, maybe uh, somewhat have a spiritual journey or spiritual life, but not super intentional. And was that was that the case for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think just for me in a personal uh, aspect. I grew up in a church. I think with a lot of my friends in the in the Korean community, uh, my parents were very involved. I was, you know, forced to go. I guess uh, so. I went for a long time, which I'm thankful for now because it, it did have a, a a huge part in my foundation that was already built. And you know, once I got older in my teenage years, uh, you know, I, I took that classic route of just I stopped going, right? And uh, yeah, so I, you know, I think that's just something that just again, fits my demographic with a bunch of me and my friends. Uh, and I remember, I think I, I told, I said this, which is really trippy when we started meeting on a regular basis with a lot of the people I grew up with. I'm talking like my brother, like Hans, I've known for a long time, friends I've known since childhood. Um, you know, even ones that I went to church with, uh, you know, I grew up, we would talk about everything, but the one thing that we never talked about was, was, was our faith in God. And so, yeah, yeah that was definitely something that, that fit my personal background and I think a lot of yeah. us small group. That's awesome. And so as we transition into uh, kind of meeting uh, regularly, um, starting to do kind of a modified uh, Bible study of sorts, um, you're getting back into a life with God and you're getting back into, um, you know, reading uh, scripture a, a little bit more regularly. And fast forward uh, to now, it's 2021. We've been uh, more than a year in a pandemic. Uh, but for the past uh, few years, um, you and I, we've been engaged in a, a discipleship mm -hmm. relationship. And so for those who, who might not know uh, what this discipleship relationship is about, can you kind of share what we do 
uh, when we um, when we meet? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, for me personally, uh, you know, I've, I've been involved in a lot of things that I can embrace. I've been blessed to be, you know, part of the worship team, a small group, uh, the leadership. Uh, I've been in a couple of leadership roles. Uh, you know, I've, I've done Bible study. And I think my favorite part about Embrace is, is discipleship. Uh, mm-hmm. I think uh, getting the one-on-one attention from you and your knowledge is amazing. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people can blow, you, uh, blow up your phone after this, but I highly recommend it. <laughs> it's absolutely phenomenal. It's like, a, I tell people it's like a spiritual, almost like a, it's like a spiritual therapist in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the best way I can describe it is, you know, is for me, it, and I know like, you know, reading the Bible, uh, praying, uh, it's a very difficult thing for me. And I think uh, one thing that resonates with me that you you called me out one time and, um, you know, I said, I love embrace. I love my relationship with Christ because of two things, love God, love people. And you said, hey, you know, Jelly, uh, you've got the love, good, the love people part. You know, let's work on the yeah. love God part. I think during discipleship, uh, you know, that's a part that I realized that I never knew, uh, I guess, Christ or Jesus, which is really weird to say. I knew, uh, and it's even to this day, uh, you know, I feel like even though I've been with on this journey for a long time, my, my walk, walk still feels very new. And, mm. um, you know, I didn't really know. I knew the stories of Jesus. I think uh, Pastor Mike was saying the hero aspect but I didn't really know Jesus uh, as a person in an intimate yeah. situation. Discipleship has really opened that up. And I, I say that you're a good, uh, an awesome lens, right? To kind mm-hmm. of translate the Bible and the word and especially apply it to my life, right? Uh, mm-hmm. For me personally, in the last, you know, actually a handful of years, I've gone through a lot of changes and, you know, uh, getting engaged and married um, and going through a pandemic. And so, you know, the, the discipleship, especially in a lot of the moments where things were difficult, absolutely helped me out so um yeah i think again it just gives me a good perspective on on faith in christ and uh, you know that lens to be able to translate everything that i don't understand that's great thank you uh thank you so much for the plug and actually i i would want my phone to blow up and have more people you know get involved with uh this opportunity for one-on-one discipleship but you know, as I understand, you know, we've been taking this journey together. Um, you know, there's been a lot of life that has happened. Um, you know, life is far from perfect. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, in the sermon this past Sunday, that uh, life is infinitely uncertain. Um, so we had the pandemic and there's all these different things going on and it's not easy. Um, but discipleship, I think we've also talked about, you know, is not meant to necessarily be easy. But, uh, you know, uh, for sure, uh, intentional. And so um, can you share uh, maybe about uh, like a challenge or a growth area that you've experienced, um, you know, over the course of our discipleship time? Not just this past year, but, you know, um, at, at, any, at any moment. Yeah, I mean, I think the growth aspect of it is really challenging. Um, one thing you've always said is, you know, God qualifies the call. He doesn't call the qualified, right? Mm-hmm. I think from every phase from East Bay small group to I remember when you, you we had our retreat and you mentioned want to start embrace or church and having us be the foundation. I was like, this guy's crazy. You know, Pastor, no, Pastor Sam is, is nuts. Uh, and I think the reason why I was projecting that was because I was afraid of that step. Right. And that continues. Right. I think, you know, you mentioned it very well. There's the world's way and there's God's way and God's way is very difficult. And you know, I think the challenge is just like the, especially this year with the pandemic, you know, for me personally being, uh, using my word for the year as discipline in faith, uh, getting married, I started to really, I mean, I haven't realized, I realized more this year than ever how selfish I am, not only as a, as a husband, but also as a child of God, right? And, you know, I think it's in the challenging part this whole time, and it still continues, is wanting to do things my way. It's to give, is giving up that selfishness and, and following God's path. And I'll say that this year was probably the most I was engaged with the Bible, with discipleship and prayer. And, you know, I think with, and that's with the knowledge of all that and, 
you know, the stuff that we've been talking to. I mean, when you're not, when you're away from the word and away from church, like the, the walk is very easy. It's not as volatile, right? But when you have the knowledge and when I say, oh, when we go through discipleship, you just opened up a whole nother world. It's, it's exciting, but scary because it just is, a, it, you know, it, it makes my spiritual walk just a lot more volatile, right? So the joys and the good times are a lot, you know, higher and obviously the challenges and, you know, like, you know, I've talked to you this year, this is the first time, like, you know, I've, we, we've talked about like challenges with, you know, evil forces. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, we're good, you know, uh, when you try to do good, evil is right there waiting for you, right? And so those swings are definitely um, just a lot more volatile and it's, it's, it's really challenging. Uh, you know, a part of me wants to say, okay, let's just take a step back and, you know, take a break. And that's why I, you know, have taken a break from, it took me a year and a half instead of a year to read the Bible, that's why I have taken, you know, a couple of uh, weeks off for, for discipleship was just because, you know, that growth is, 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 is challenging and scary, just like anything in life. Right. And I think, um, you know, when it comes to personal life, career, you know, marriage, life, whatever it is, growth is, is, is difficult and hard. But when it comes to spiritual, like, oh, it's, you know, it's just, I think just X amount, you know, uh, a lot uh, X amount more challenging in a great way. And sometimes, you know, a negative way. That's awesome. So thank you for sharing that. And let's talk about uh, your commitment to read through the Bible in one year. Uh, I actually invited you and a, a few others uh, to do this uh, with me. Uh, this was for the year of 2020. So we began in January before the pandemic. And we were using a Bible app, the One Year Bible Reading Plan. <laughs> And um, fast forward, uh, I believe you, you just finished this, right? It took a little bit more than a year, but you, you finished it, uh, you've completed it. Uh, but I would love to hear about like what, what were maybe like, um, or, or maybe the most revolutionary thing about being committed to regular, uh, somewhat daily uh, Bible reading. What, what was that for you? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh... It just, I, again, going back to before, learning Jesus, I think was just something I've never done at this level. And I've never, I mean, I've read like parts of the Bible. I think I started before, I was like, I'm going to read the Bible in one year, read, you know, Genesis, read the first like three or four books, stop. Like, okay, I'll start with the New Testament, read the New Testament, you know, get halfway through and stop. So I've never even come close to reading as much as I've read. Uh, and, you know, before reading the one year Bible, I would do like the devos and, and stuff in small group, but never read nearly as much. And that's why it was, it was one of the most challenging things I've, I've done. And, you know, I think just, I think the mistake that I made and, you know, the, one of the big just joys I've got out of it was I just changed my expectation. I used to always think like when I read, I need to get something out of it. And, you know, if something didn't hit me, then I would get discouraged and just stop. But, you know, this time I kind of just stayed present and just was, it had a mindset of saying, God, speak to me whenever you speak to me. And the, the theory I have is, you know, uh, you know, Steph Curry, you know, he, he sh misses 60, 70 percent of the shots. But the difference between him and other players, he shoots 10 times more. And so, you know, if I'm reading the Bible, I'm in the word. And, you know, instead of reading one time a week or a month or a year, you know, if I read it times 10 or, you know, 20 X, then you now I'm getting more return, right? That 30% is, is coming back in, in uh, more abundance or harvesting more, right? And so, uh, yeah, I think it's just like, especially this year, I don't know what it is. Um, you know, God has been really just speaking to me through the word. And, you know, I always say there's no, no such thing as a coincidence, but there's things that would happen, you know, where, um, I would be feeling a certain way and the devotional would reinforce me or the devotion or that day, you know, God would say something that would prepare me for that day. And so I would say like, you know, the, it, it prepared me. I, I know Ephesians was a six, uh, the armor of God, uh, verse, I don't know the verses, but I know it's, uh, Ephesians six. Ephesians six is close enough. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing it did for me was one or two things. One, it got me to know Jesus more. And throughout, I mean, it helped me put on the armor. Well, I would say 
the, the now, like the thing that I picture is like maybe the lenses, like, you know, I I've always kind of pictured like, you know, the world, the world, like five glasses, you know, the world is one lens and, and or the perspective. And then you have Jesus perspective. And a lot of times like both, you know, it'll, it'll, it's a battle. Right. And it's very easy without the word to look at things from the world's point of view, which will always tell me I'm not good enough. I need more. And being in the word and prayer reminds me to flip that lens into Jesus's perspective, which always is you are enough and you have enough. Right. And, you know, the unconditional love. And so I think those are the two things. And it it just helps for me in just a, a personal level, you know, on how I, you know, live my life throughout the day. I mean, of course, it's, it's, it's always an ongoing battle. But having God's perspective, which, you know, is the best perspective is is key. And the word absolutely helped me with that. And then on top of that, um, getting to know Jesus on a more intimate level. Uh, this is actually something that you mentioned was something that's newer for me in our discipleship. Um, and that's part of the part where uh, I'm, you know, is I guess new, even though I've been going to church and doing all this for eight years, it's been, I would say new this year, again, transitioning from Jesus and hearing the stories again and actually getting into a place where I know him as a, you know, on a one-on-one level has been a huge game changer for me as well. That's awesome. Thank you, uh, Jelly. And and first of all, thanks for that Steph Curry reference, because it wouldn't be a Jason Lee testimony without a sport, sports reference someplace uh, in there. Um, but I love what you're pointing out that, you know, not every single moment that we read the Bible or open up scripture has to be so powerful and, and magical. But over time, right, it permeates our hearts and it makes a difference. And I would love for you to share because the last thing that you mentioned uh, is really what we're talking about today, about how do we come to know Jesus uh, on a deeper level through scripture? And so what are some of the new things that, um, you know, some recent learnings that you received about Jesus in, in terms of like the intimacy or kind of going deeper and not just knowing about him, uh, but knowing him? Uh, anything in particular that st- stands out for you? But yeah, you know, and, you know, hearing the same stories over and over again, changing perspective, um, I think it's just been, you know, a, a big key. Um, you know, one thing I always say is, is, you know, you do this too. I think it's representation. But one thing that God is really good at and Jesus, you know, is, is he, the ability to Mr. Miyagi me, which means, you know, the whole wax on, wax off. You think you're cleaning something and you're doing these moves, but in actuality, you know, Mr. Miyagi is teaching you karate moves, right? And that's where I think God has been doing the same thing. And in the word, it's funny because the same stories I hear over and over and over again, like I hear the stories and, you know, as I evolve in my walk with Christ and as my relationship gets closer, these stories start to hit home and it starts to, 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 to actually make sense to me personally. And uh, one was the Storm's, um, you know, message that you had about, you know, uh, the disciples going across the sea with Peter walking on water. I've heard that a million, millions of times, but every single time uh, I went through that passage, it, it hit me in a different way, right? Um, for example, like, you know, Jesus would tell me, like, be careful of the storms, trust in me, um, you know, and it'd be something I'd be afraid of and be like, okay, I don't want to see, see these storms. And then the next time I hear the story, it's like, I'm going through these storms. And so it, it, it comforts me. And then the last time I heard it was during small group. I was like, okay, these storms are going, you know, in, in all aspects of our life through everybody. So this is a common thing we all all go through. And so that same story, you know, had has had different meanings throughout my life, uh, you know. And I think it's just again the Mr. Miyagi effect, where, you know, just I don't know if I wasn't listening before, or if I wasn't seeking hard enough. But I would say with that curry effect, I am taking more shots. I am seeking more. And so therefore, God is giving more, me more, uh, is speaking to me more about these stories in a deeper level. So I think that's just been a, a huge thing and just continuing to, to, to take those shots. That's great. And thank you for uh, sharing all of that. And I, I am always so excited, uh, you know, to share a time of discipleship with you. And um, as you know, uh, I learn uh, maybe just as much as you're learning from me um, is uh, out of these conversations, I, I, I always come to new insights and, and new revelations. And 
And, and my relationship with Christ also goes deeper and deeper as we commit ourselves to the word. And uh, Jelly, I, I'm so grateful for you sharing your resurrection story with us today. But because I know that um, you are a leader in our church, uh, you are an influencer uh, among your circle of friends. Uh, if there's like a word of encouragement that you can give to those that are hearing uh, this particular testimony today about reading the Bible, uh, what would that be? I mean, I would say <clears throat> when it comes to reading the Bible in particular, uh, just do it, you know, uh, just do it. And uh, it's coming from someone, trust me, like I'm not someone who reads, I'm a visual learner. Uh, I've read, you know, again, the, the, the word multiple times. And I think a lot of times it, it hasn't resonated, but I would say keep doing it and you'll be, you'll be surprised. Um, on how God does speak to you. And when it does happen, uh, again, I don't believe in coincidences. Um, I know it's God, you know, speaking to me. And so I would say, just just do it. And another thing is too, is Eli's P. Sam. He's a great reference. Um, it absolutely helps. Uh, again, he's the, the lens, you know, uh, to just help see everything a lot more clearly. And I would say for sure, a thousand percent, you know, I, I have topics in mind when we go into our discipleship. I have things that I've read or I've went through that I need clarification on. And it's so confusing, but you absolutely have helped me not only uh, understand the meaning behind the word, but also, you know, give giving me the, the lens to be able to have that reflect in my life personally. So, yeah, I'm grateful for you too, brother. And I'm, you know, so thankful for, you know, our, our discipleship. And uh, I recommend again to everybody, you know, talk to P. Sam. He's a great source. And, and and just get in the word, you know, just trust that, you know, Steph Curry mentality, keep, keep shooting, uh, shoot more. And uh, the more you shoot, the, the more buckets you'll get. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Jelly. That's a perfect end to this uh, conversation. And thank you for all you do and uh, blessings for the journey uh, that is ahead of you. Thank you, Jelly. Thank you. Hey, man. Well, th thanks once again to our brother in Christ, uh, Jason. Um, mentioning Mr. Miyagi, uh, Steph Curry, uh, Nike, just do it. Um, love uh, the encouragement and 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 just the plug uh, for us to all, you know, get deeper into uh, the Word uh, of God. Like these two disciples on the journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus, even in the moments of their confusion and doubts, and even when they didn't get it, Jesus meets them where they're at in the midst of their questioning and he opens up scripture to them and their hearts are burning. Friends, I believe what God is inviting us to in the midst of our own questions and our doubts is a seven mile journey of sorts. And I wanna let you know, you know, there is no way around it. Uh, recognizing and knowing the risen Christ comes best by way of scripture. We see it in Luke chapter 24. We see it in, in Jelly's uh, testimony. And I, I've seen it in my own life as well. Uh, hopefully m many of you know, uh, I love the word of God. I love teaching the word of God. And, and I remember uh, in my first year at, in seminary in, in Washington, D.C. at Wesley Theological Seminary, I remember sitting in uh, the uh, intro to New Testament class with Dr. Uh, Sharon Ringy. And there was this one day as she was just unpacking, you know, some things in, in the Bible. Uh, I, I just literally, I mean, I felt my, my brain growing bigger as I was being exposed to the power of the word of God. There is no way around it. Recognizing and knowing the risen Christ comes best by way of scripture, not by way of our opinions, not by way of our thoughts, not by way of our imagination, not by way of our wishful thinking, not by our way of our own desires. No, recognizing Jesus, coming to know him, fully know him, comes by way of being committed to the word of God. And this is why even the apostle Paul will say to his disciple, uh, the young Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, 
and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And he says, all scriptures God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. In other words, if you are experiencing doubts in your journey of faith, if you are wrestling with certain questions as you try to seek God and to do life with God, if you're still wondering about the truth and the reality of the resurrection 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul will say, hey, you don't have to go any further than just opening up the Bible and reading it. And you do it day after day. And not every single moment is going to be mind-blowing. Not every single moment is going to be so profound and you know, jaw-dropping type of experience. But over a course of, of uh, a season and, you know, this kind of a longer seven-mile journey, if you will, uh, of committing to seek Christ in the Word of God, that the resurrected Jesus will come to be present in your life and you will come to know him deeper and deeper. And I pray that today that you will commit uh, to this particular journey And friends, if anyone, by the way, is interested in discipleship and going deeper in the Word, I welcome my phone to be blown up, as as Jelly uh, says, and and just, um, yeah, reach out. And I I would love to talk to you about what it means uh, to seek Jesus uh, through through the Bible. And right now, I want to invite you to pray as we um, maybe make this commitment today, uh, whether through discipleship, Uh, whether through our own devotions, to seek Jesus in his word. Let's do that right now. Let's pray. God, I, I pray that in this moment, that if we are at all experiencing any sort of spiritual blindness, God, that you would bring healing upon the eyes of our hearts, that we would see you, that we would come to know you, that we would come to recognize the risen Jesus that is absolutely in our midst. God, we, we want to not just be in a casual relationship with you. We want to be intentional. We want to be committed. Uh, we want constancy uh, in our life of pursuing uh, a relationship with you, God. And so, Lord, May you reveal more of yourself. May Jesus become present in our hearts of faith um, as we commit ourselves to a daily reading of the word of God. May the word become powerful. May it become useful for us to teach us, to rebuke us, to correct us, and to train us in righteousness and ultimately to make us wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. For we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. And we come to this moment in our worship as we do each and every week um, to gather around uh, the Lord's table. And even in the story of the walk to Emmaus, we know that the the risen Jesus uh, sat with these two disciples and he broke bread And in the breaking of the bread, they began to recognize Jesus in the midst of the unfolding of the scriptural narrative. And so for us today, uh, this sacrament of Holy Communion is a way of recognizing Jesus uh, in our midst. I I hope you had an opportunity to prepare uh, your gifts and your home, a piece of bread, a cracker, and and maybe some juice. Uh, If you have, please bring those uh, closer together and... If you want to run to the kitchen right now and, and grab those uh, humble elements, uh, please do so. And today, as we get into this time of communion, uh, I do want to take a moment um, to remember and to mourn and grieve uh, the killing of Dante uh, Wright uh, earlier uh, this week. Uh, once again, uh, tragedy has unfolded 
in Minneapolis, even as uh, the trial of Derek Chauvin is going on. Um, this unnecessary and senseless killing of another uh, African American male. We, we remember Dante and we pray for uh, his girlfriend, China, uh, their son, almost two year old, uh, Dante Jr., uh, Dante's mother, and um, many of his loved ones who are uh, experiencing tremendous, tremendous grief. And I know that many of you uh, have been filled with grief as well this week and experiencing uh, even anger as, as I have uh, watching um, uh, over and over again what has unfolded. Um, we live in a broken world. We live in a world where white supremacy and institutional racism and a broken police and legal system continue uh, to run amok. And so as we gather around the Lord's table and remember that our God is a God of justice, uh, let us take a moment to remember yet another precious life and to invite God to bring justice and healing in our midst. I invite you to a moment of silence as we lift up uh, Dante uh, to our Lord. And as we lift up those prayers, uh, we remember that on the night before Jesus laid down his life, he took bread, gave thanks to God, he blessed it, and he shared it with his disciples, his friends in the upper room. And he said to them, take this all of you. This is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat this all of you. And as often as you eat this, do this remembering me. In the same way, after the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to God. He blessed it. He gave it to his disciples, his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from this. This is my blood, which has been shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this, all of you, and as often as you drink from this, do this in remembrance of me. And so today, we remember the love of Jesus Christ. We remember his sacrifice. We remember that through him laying down his life for us on the cross, that we have an opportunity to experience forgiveness and healing and redemption. And that through God's spirit in the sacrament that we can be made whole. And so we pray over these gifts of bread and cup. And we pray over those humble gifts that you have prepared in your homes that they would be for us today the Holy Communion of Jesus Christ, reminding us that indeed the resurrected Jesus is present with us right here, right now, loving us, forgiving us, and making us whole. And so God, by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. For we pray this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now in your homes, would you take the body of Christ and the blood of Jesus and receive with great thanksgiving and with faith. Let us also remember that in this moment that we are all connected together as one body in Christ. Let us receive and be thankful.
Amen. Well, it's been so great to be able to worship together uh, this morning. And once again, I want to declare that God is great here and now, here and now. God is great. Thank you for joining us for worship. Great thanks to our worship leaders, uh, Hans Cho and Mike Lee, uh, John Kim, for safely live streaming this worship service uh, into our homes. I uh, want to offer a couple announcements before I, I give the benediction uh, this morning. Uh, we do have a, another membership class coming up uh, right around the corner, a Saturday, May uh, first, um, would love for you, if you haven't had the opportunity uh, to go through our membership class, to please sign up. This is just an incredible opportunity to get to know our ministry, our vision uh, a little bit better, and, and to know the story uh, of, of Embrace and hopefully ultimately come to a place uh, of commitment as members. Uh, if you're interested in, in signing up, uh, please uh, email me at embracepastor at gmail. Dot com would love to get you on that list. Uh, also on um, May the 8th, the following Saturday, uh, our social impact team will be hosting uh, another uh, incredible event. Uh, this will be focused on, on mental health. I don't know if you know this, but May is Mental Health Awareness, and our social impact team has put together a workshop, workshop called Christ-Centered Mindful meditation. It's going to be an incredible opportunity, 11 a.m. to 1230. I know that through this pandemic, a lot of us are still experiencing a lot of stress and anxiety and fear. Uh, we're downloading those meditation apps, and uh, I don't know, I, some of those I think cost some money. Friends, this is absolutely free and, and being made available to you. It's going to be a great opportunity to learn what it means to be Christ-centered as we engage in mindful meditation. As a bonus, we're going to have also a Q&A with our very own Mary Choi, who is being trained to be a therapist and so grateful uh, for our social impact team uh, bringing that to us. Friends, I would love to be uh, in prayer for you. If ever you need something uh, being lifted up in prayer, uh, please email me, text me. Uh, it would be my joy and honor to intercede on your behalf uh, throughout the week. And as you continue to faithfully give um, to our, our ministry to support us financially and also to, uh, to utilize giving as an act of your worship, I want to remind you that you can always do that at embracechurch.org slash give. Friends, I, I miss you. Uh, I can't wait to see you. Uh, until then, uh, please be safe and healthy. And as you go forth from this place of worship, uh, may you go forth uh, walking with the resurrected Jesus. Even in the midst of your questions and doubts, may Jesus meet you on that road to Emmaus. And through the power of the word of God, may you come to know him deeper and deeper still. May the Holy Spirit fill your hearts and your homes this week as we pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.